Hi, and welcome back to this video series on the CCNA security exam, implementing Cisco IOS network security. In this section, we will consider common security threats. This is the part one of several videos in this particular section. In this video, you would learn an introduction to security. We would also see some common terminologies in the security sphere. And finally, we will consider different classifications of assets, countermeasures, and threats. Now, what is security? Security is made up of three aspects known as the CIA triad. What does C stand for? C stands for confidentiality. I stands for integrity. And A stands for availability. Now, what is confidentiality? Confidentiality ensures that no unauthorized party has access to information or resources. In essence, confidentiality deals with privacy. Integrity ensures that information is not altered in storage or while in transit. And availability ensures that resources or information are available to authorized parties when needed. It's easy to remember the CIA triad when you think about the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States of America because they deal with security. Let's discuss some common terminologies in the security sphere. The first on the list is asset. An asset is anything that is worth protecting. For example, the president of any country is an asset to that country. Next on the list is vulnerability. As we know, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Therefore, vulnerability is any weakness that can be exploited. For example, an unlocked backdoor to a highly secure facility is a vulnerability. Next on the list is threat. Now, what is a threat? A threat is anything that can exploit a vulnerability or attack you in any other way. We also have risk. Risk ties threat vulnerability and business impact together. Giving a definition, a risk is the probability of a threat agent exploiting a vulnerability and the resulting impact on the business. For example, if an intruder gains access to the facility through that back door, will it give the person access to the main lab? Finally, we'll consider countermeasures. A countermeasure, also known as a control, is a protection mechanism against a potential threat, thus reducing the risk. On this slide, we will consider asset classification. To begin with, why do we classify assets? It is so that we can focus on what is important and dedicate more resources to those important things. There are no hard and fast rules for classifying assets. However, we have some common classification. The first on the list is government classification. This is also used in the military and under this there are five categories. First on the list is unclassified unclassified the next on the list is sensitive but unclassified also referred to as the SBU next on the list we have confidential and then we have secret and finally the one that everybody is conversant with is the top secret which is usually represented by this symbol we also have the private sector and the commercial organization classifications. And under this section, there are four categories. The first being public, the second being sensitive, the third being private, and finally, we have confidential. Like I said, there is no standard for asset classification. An organization can choose to use two levels while another uses six levels. There are certain factors that determine how data or information is classified. We could call this the criteria for classification of asset. One of it could be value. What is the value of this resource to the organization? For example, the account databases will be of great value to a financial institution. Another criterion would be age. 
how old is this data? After some time, information becomes obsolete and we will not need protection. For example, for those of you who have seen the movie Argo, this was actually based on a true life story of events that were declassified. Another criterion could be legal requirement. We all know how privacy is important to users and to people. So it might be a requirement, a legal requirement for you to protect the data of people. Finally, on this asset classifications, we will talk about the roles in classification. The first role that we have is called the owner. Now, who is the owner? The owner is the one who is ultimately responsible for that information. This is usually senior management. Next, we have the custodian. The custodian is the one responsible for safeguarding the data. This is usually the IT department and as a CCNA security, this is where you're going to fall into the custodian of the data. And finally, we have the user, the person or group of persons who use this data on a day-to-day -day basis. Moving on to countermeasure classification. There are two major ways by which we can classify countermeasures and we'll consider them here. The first is by type. By type, we could have three major classifications. Administrative, This includes policies, guidelines. As the name suggests, these are more of rules and documents of how things should be done. The next one that we have on the list is logical controls, also known as technical controls. This is where the CCNA security would fall under because here you have things like firewalls, you have routers, you have your switches, and other devices like that. And finally, we have physical controls. Physical controls are like fences, um, access doors, vaults, and things like that. Now, on as a CCNA security, the part we focus on mainly are the logical controls. But as you go on in your security journey you find out that the administrative controls and the physical controls are also very important we'll also look at the classification by functionality here we could have deterrent this discourage attacks for example when someone sees a high fence he probably thinks that the facility behind that high fence must be highly guarded another on this list is detective this helps to identify attacks and finally we have preventive now the difference between preventive and detective is preventive not only identify attacks it can also help to stop those attacks Generally, there are two major categories of threats to a network, internal threats and external threats. Internal threats come from within the organization and can be very dangerous because of the inside knowledge, while external threats originate from outside the organization's network. We tend to focus more on the external threats while we ignore the internal threats. But really, we need to guard against internal threats because they can also be very, very dangerous. Now, who are the potential attackers to a network? The first that would have a terrorist. Now, if you are a 24 series fan like me, then you understand the threat that terrorists can cause, not just to an organization, but to a nation on, it, on a whole. We also have hackers. Under hackers, we have the white hat hackers. We have the grey hat hackers, and 
we have the black hat hackers. The white hat hackers are the guys who hack for a good cause. They are the ones you call when you want to run like a penetration testing or a vulnerability assessment. The black hat hackers are the bad guys. They are the evil ones. They are the ones that we don't want on our network at all. And the gray hats are white hat hackers in the morning and they are black hat hackers in the evening. Other potential attackers that we need to consider are hacktivist, which is a pawn of two words, hacker and activist. So these hackers hack for a cause. Next that we need to consider are script kiddies. They don't really know what they are doing, but because of so many tools on the internet, they can be very, very dangerous. And finally, we have disgruntled employees. Disgruntled employees feel, they may feel they were laid off unjustly, or they feel they should have received the promotion and didn't get it. And these people can cause harm to your network. This brings us to the end of this video where we have learned an introduction to security. We saw the CIA triad, which is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. We also saw certain security terminologies like assets, vulnerabilities, threats, and finally, we looked at the different classifications of assets, countermeasures, and threats. I hope this video has been informative, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.